Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be looking at classes in Python. So as with any other object-oriented coding language, we have the ability to define classes, define our own objects, and make instance of these classes in Python. Now, if any of this terminology is unclear, or if it's been a while since you learned it, I'll try to go over it as much as possible throughout the course of this video. So instead of answering this question generally, this question here about when we should use classes, I thought let's just go through a concrete example in this video and learn how to code classes in Python by actually just doing it. So here's the setup. Let's say we're the administrator for a university and we want to keep track of all of the students who go there. Specifically, we'll just maintain three small pieces of info about each student. We'll have the student's name, student's GPA, and student's major. Also, we'll want a little bit of functionality. We'll want to be able to change a student's major and update a student's GPA. So this is the first class we'll create called student, and it contains data and functionality for a student. So a very simple definition of the student's class might look like this. To define a class in Python, use the class word. You put the name of the class followed by a colon. And inside here, you'll put all of the variables and functions that have to do about this class. So one of the most important functions when it comes to a class is this init function, which is followed and trailed by two underscores. And this init function you can think of as similarly to a constructor, where whenever you create a new instance of this class or whenever we create a new student, this is the first function that's going to get called to basically set up all of our variables and get the student set up correctly. So if we look at the arguments of this init function, You'll notice the first one is called self. This is the argument we'll explain thoroughly throughout this video, but right now you can just think of it as the current student that we are initializing. And the other three are usually pieces of information that you want to initialize about this current student. So for us, the name, the GPA, and the major of the student. Now inside, we do three very similar things. I'll just explain the first one because the other two are pretty much the same. We say self.name is equal to the name that was provided to us. What this basically says is that for this current student I'm working on, I would like to set their name equal to the name you passed in, and similarly with the GPA and the major that you passed in. So that way, this student has their information set correctly. Now we'll worry about this university name in just a second, but first let's focus on the initializer. So now to create a particular student, or what we call an instance of the student class, we would do it like this. You put the name of the class and you put in the three pieces of information that are expected, which are again, name, GPA, and major. Now, some of you are scratching your head saying, wait, there's four arguments here, but you've just put three here. How can that work? Well, with classes, this first argument self is treated a little bit specially. And again, we'll dive a little bit more into that throughout this video, but just suffice to say that you don't have to explicitly include that argument here. It's already taken care of for you. So basically after this line, we have that S1 is an instance or a particular student at our university who has the following attributes, name Harry, GPA 3.4, and major math, which we can prove by just doing S1.name, S1.GPA, S1.major. So we get all of the information that we passed in, which gives us confirmation that the student was initialized correctly. Now let's initialize a second student. So we can just do the similar syntax and put that in a variable called S2. The student's name is Hermione, has a 4.0 GPA, and is studying history. And we can print out Hermione's information and we get what we'd expect. Now here's some terminology for you. Self.name, self.gpa, and self.major are what we call instance variables because they're specific to the particular student. We can prove that by basically saying that when we printed out these characteristics for S2, we got different values than when we printed out these characteristics for S1 which seems obvious, but it's worth noting. Now, the other reason we define an instance variable is because that's contrasting to what we call a class variable. So if we scroll back up here, the last piece we didn't explain yet was this university name. Notice that we don't have self.university name. It's just university name is equal to Hogwarts and it's outside of this initializer. This is what we call an example of a class variable. So this is a variable that's shared by every single student. So no matter if you're S1 or S2, if we create a new student called S3 and any other students we create, all of them share the same university name, Hogwarts. And let's go ahead and see if we can prove that. So if I print s1.university name, s2.university name, I get Hogwarts and Hogwarts. And an even stronger statement, if I get the ID of these two variables, you'll notice these IDs are exactly the same. So not only are both university names Hogwarts, they're actually referencing exactly the same piece of memory. 
So it's not even like we have two copies. They're literally referencing the same piece of memory, which is the class variable called university name. So make sure you have these ideas of an instance variable and class variable down before we go on. Now, moving on, I want to show what can happen if you define class variables incorrectly, or if you think you're defining a instance variable, but it's actually a class variable. So let's pretend we have a class variable called current courses, which is an empty list. And let's say our intention was to have this store a list of courses taken by each student. So we're hoping this is specific to a student, but based on the way it's coded, this is a class variable. So it's going to be shared by all of the students. So let's say I again create two students, Harry and Hermione. I print out both of their current courses, which is empty because that's what the class variable currently is, an empty list. Now here's where the problems start happening. If I do s1.currentcourses.append math1, that's going to find the current courses and append math1. And since this is a class variable, this is actually going to get changed for every single student out there, not just the student s1, which is what we intended by this statement. We can prove that by doing print s1.currentcourses, which is math1. This was intended, but the unintended effect is that s2.currentcourses is also math1. So make sure you understand what should be an instance variable and what should be a class variable. That's a very important distinction. So the right way to code this would have been self.currentcourses is equal to an empty list because now this becomes specific to each individual student. Now let's add a couple of functionalities to our student class. So we still have this class variable university name. We still have the same initializer. We can also define custom functions inside each class. So these are called class functions. So one of the ones we wanted was update GPA. These also must contain the word self, and we'll explain a little bit more on that in just a moment. And then we have the new GPA we want to set. And what we do is pretty simple. We just set the GPA of the student equal to the new GPA that was passed in. Same idea with the update major function. Now, if we do uh, create a student called Harry again, print out Harry's current name, GPA, and major. Then we do update GPA to 3.6 and then we print out name, GPA, and major, we see the GPA has been successfully updated. So our class function did its job. We can do the same thing for major, and we see the major's been updated here. Now I finally want to explain what's up with this weird self thing that we've been looking at. It's really mystifying for a lot of students, especially because it messes with the number of arguments we seem to pass in. The answer is that some of the stuff we've been writing is really just shorthand for a longer version, and the longer version makes a lot more sense. So when we write something like s1.update major chemistry, so that's us trying to change the major of student s1 to chemistry, this is actually just a convenient shorthand for this longer statement, which is student, which is the name of the class, dot update major, and you pass in two arguments, s1 and chemistry. So the following steps will execute. We're going to visit the student.update major function, which is right here. So we visit student.update major function, and we pass in two arguments, the first one being s1, which is the student, and the second one being chemistry. If we go inside that function, now we see the two arguments that are expected. The first one is the student s1. So we're saying student s1 dot major is equal to chemistry. And that hopefully makes more sense about how the self keyword actually works. So if I were to execute the line this way using the full form rather than the shortcut form, then we have the exact same effect. Harry's major gets changed to chemistry. It's just that in practice, people will usually write the shorter version and it's understood that it stands for the longer version, but the longer version does help our understanding a lot, I would say. Now, the next thing I wanna go over in this video is lookup rules for class versus instance variables because this can also be a point of confusion for a lot of students. If I were to do right now s1.universalName, name, of course I get Hogwarts, and this is a class variable because it is at this, because it's coded in this way. Now if I get the ID of that class variable, it's living at this memory location. If I create a student s2 and I get the university name for this student, it's of course Hogwarts, and as we saw before, the ID is the same. So they're referencing the same class variable, so no new things here yet. Now let's say I do a new statement called s1.universalName name is equal to UCLA. Now, of course, if I do s1.university name, it's going to be equal to UCLA. If I do ID of s1.university name, it lives here. s2.university name is still Hogwarts. We haven't changed s2's university name. And if I get the ID of s2 university name, it's still at this memory address ending in 7616, the same exact memory address here. So what happened here? Now, 
S1 is talking about an instance variable. So this line where I wrote S1.university name is equal to UCLA, I basically set a new instance variable of S1 called university name equal to UCLA. So I've basically said that now you have a instance variable called university name, and I'm setting that to UCLA. That did not affect the university name here, which is still the class variable. So make sure you keep this distinction in mind. Now I think we'll just end this video here because so far we've talked about how to define a custom class in Python, we've talked about instance variables, and we talked about class variables and all the nuances that go along with them. I think in the next video we'll pick up with creating the course class, which defines a course at a university, and we'll talk about how the student class and the course class might interact, okay? So until next time.